Hello, you're watching at theraces.com with Cheltenham Preview 2014. Mick Fitzgerald is here in the studio and he'll get his views on the Ryanair in a moment. But let's first of all have a look at the major contenders. Sizing Europe under strong pressure. Arvika Legionnaire making ground between horses. Beneficent towards the near side. Coming down out of the final fence in the petty power dial a bit. Beneficent on the near side of Arvika Legionnaire. Hidden cyclone in between them. They're racing inside the last 200 yards. And Beneficent is the leader as they race to the final 200 yards. It is Beneficent and Brian Cooper. Hidden cyclone trying hard to come back. Arvika Legionnaire is third. But Beneficent will win it again for Tony Martin and Brian Cooper. Holding him together towards the last two fences. Alfaroff reaches for the second last. Is over six to eight clear. French Opera trying to close under pressure. And Alfaroff will have to be shaken up on the run down towards the last. French Opera's got back to within four to six lengths at the final fence. But Alfaroff comes in, really stands off the last, a big leap, that will seal it for sure. In second is French Opera, and Alfaroff returns to action with a win. He's still relatively unexposed, only a 16th start under rules. Good opportunity found by Paul Nichols, and he didn't fluff his lines, Alfaroff, he's won well. They're on the run now towards the final fence, and it is last instalment, three lengths clear. First Lieutenant, Texas Jack trying to make ground the outside, coming down to the final fence. Last installment over and clear now of Lane. First Lieutenant and Texas Jack and Laureen Legend, and then Tidal Bay, but up towards the finish. It's last installment out clear for Brian O'Connell, and is going to win the Hennessy Gold Cup for Jiggenstown and Philip Fenton. Last installment wins by a long way. The veteran Tidal Bay comes through to take second. First lieutenant is third. Sizing Europe under strong pressure. Arvika Legionnaire making ground between horses. Beneficent towards the near side. Coming down out of the final fence in the petty power dial a bit. Beneficent on the near side of Arvika Legionnaire. Hidden cyclone in between them. They're racing inside the last 200 yards. And Beneficent is the leader as they race to the final 200 yards. It is Beneficent and Brian Cooper. Hidden cyclone trying hard to come back. Arvika Legionnaire is third. But Beneficent will win it again for Tony Martin and Brian Cooper. They've had great success with Beneficent. Hidden Cyclone, now Vika Legionnaire, follow him in. Spring Heald, he led by six lengths to Cloudy Two. Back in third is Corto Stone, and the others are just dots on the horizon now behind Captain Chris. This so popular 10 year old comes towards the final fence. The hands of Richard Johnson, he's over safely and getting a tremendous reception from the Ascot crowd. He's now gone clear by 15, 20 lengths. The Betfair Ascot chase belongs to one horse. That horse is Captain Chris, who robbed home to take the 20th running of the Ascot Chase. Captain Chris in a league of his own today. Cloudy 2 was in second. Well, there we have a look at some of the main contenders for the Ryanair Chase. As I say, Mick Fitzgerald is here in the studio with me. It's of all of well, the uncertainty of what's going to run in certain races. This is probably the one. It seems to be sort of a, a halfway house between either going for the champion chase or horses that are going for the for the Gold Cup. Captain Chris, who we just saw, will mm. probably go for the Gold Cup. Yeah, and, you know, there's talk now, even the, the ones at the very head of the market, the likes of Beneficent and Alfaroff, we're not sure yet where they're going to go. So, you know, there is doubts about the participation of a few of these, so I'd strongly advise anybody to, who fancies a horse to back it and make sure you back it non runner no bet which you can certainly do. Well, let's have a look at Beneficent because we know he's got good Cheltenham mm. form, which is always a really good weapon to have on your side at the Cheltenham Festival. Here he is winning the Paddy Power dial -a chase at Leopardstown over Christmas, beating Hidden Cyclone and Arvika Legionnaire, sizing Europe back in, in fourth place. If he runs in the, in the Ryanair, would you give him a big ch oh, chance? Oh, huge, huge. I really fancy this horse in this race. And you know, Dyne Aston himself were very closely matched on running last year in the Juice and Novice Chase. You know, they're two horses who I think, 
you know, probably should be at the head of the market for this race, Beneficent and Dynast. Not a lot between them on running last year. And I think for me, Beneficent, the fact that, you know, he's a horse, if it dries, if we see any drying of the ground, Beneficent a much better horse on better ground. And I think, you know, we've had such a wet spell. If we do get any dry weather in the build-up to Cheltenham, it'll only increase this horse. Chance. And if he was yours, you would run him in the Ryanair? I would, yeah. I, I just think he looked so good when he won over two and a half there last year. Well, Alpha Roth we can have a look at now, the grey horse trained by Paul Nichols. Again, his uh, ultimate target is, has yet to be confirmed. We can see him here. It's a two-horse race. He beat Nicky Henderson's French Opera here by eight lengths in the Amlin chase at uh, Ascot back in November. Where would you run him? Well, I just think that he should take a punt with this horse and run him in the champion chase. He, you know, he's a horse with very good Cheltenham Festival form. And, you know, I know I keep harping on about it, but you, you look at all the previous winners at the Cheltenham Festivals in the last 10 years, so many of them have been horses that have had good previous form at a previous festival. So I think you've got a lot to go on with Alfaroff. You know, I think you can forgive him he's running the King George when he was very disappointing. I thought the horse might have bounced because he was so exuberant that day at Ascot. He might have actually taken more out of himself than you thought. You don't think it was true? Because the next time he ran on horrible ground when he got beaten by Harry uh, Topper He's just not a stare that horse you know he doesn't see out the trip and the problem you've got with Newbury if you run at Newbury on bottomless ground two very long straights very fair fences they go a decent gallop and they get strung out and for me I just think it put too much emphasis on stamina for him that race at Newbury. Okay well now another major player another grey horse in fact is Dynast of David Pipes now this is good Cheltenham form really because we could have um, you can make a strong case because in last year's uh, Juice and Chase you're talking about Beneficent winning that Dynas finished second behind him. He was beaten just over three lengths. He was, and, you know, I, I actually think Tom Skew's got a job to do when he rides this horse. He's basically got, he's got to put him to sleep, and he's got to have one goal with him and make sure that one goal is from the last home because it puts more emphasis on stamina than the new course where the Ryanairs run on, and Skew will have to be at his brilliant best to get this horse to switch off and then produce that finishing kick up the hill. Because then next time, over three miles, three miles and a furlong, he bolted in at Aintree. Yeah, but a very different track. And I think Skew basically rode him almost like he wasn't really off and just let the horse carry him into the race. He's got to ride him like that in the Ryanair. If he does, he's a player. On recent form, he's got to, I mean, on recent form, he's got to you know, get his act together, hasn't he? He was very disappointing at, at Kempton. But if you go back to that Betfair chase up at Haydock, where he split two very good horses, Sylvan Yako Conti and, and Q Card. That form's good that enough to win That was a great run, here. wasn't it? Yeah. But Beneficent is your selection? Um, Beneficent would be my selection, the way things are. Beneficent is Mick Fitzgerald's selection for the Ryanair chase. You've been watching our Cheltenham preview of the Ryanair on AtTheRaces.com.